After months of delays, the Lincoln MKZ Hybrid is fully stocked in dealer lots. And while that wait time might have been too bitter for some pallets, I decided to take a closer look at this car for two key reasons. First, Lincoln's making bold claims about its fuel consumption, saying that it offers the most miles per gallon of any luxury sedan. The second, it has miles of curb appeal. But as you may know, American luxury cars often carry skin deep quality that doesn't carry all the way through. So, is the Lincoln MKZ Hybrid really all it's cracked up to be, or is it just a fancy Ford Fusion full of empty promises? Under the hood, you'll find a two liter Atkinson cycle engine that in tandem with an electric motor makes 188 horsepower. That power goes through a continuously variable transmission and according to the EPA, will help you achieve 45 miles per gallon across the board. Not only that, but the MKZ hybrid has the same starting price as the regular MKZ model. That means it comes in at just about $36,000. Mind you, our test car is nicely equipped and just crests 48,000. If there's one thing that the MKZ can promise you, it's head turning style. And for a car that starts around $36,000, it really is remarkable. It comes standard with 18 inch alloys, although our test model has the 19 inch optional units. Aside from that, the grille, the side profile, and the closely cropped rear end really are standout features of this car. There's also an available retractable glass roof, and it's a $3,000 option, but a box that you're definitely going to want to check off. Adding the panoramic sunroof makes the cabin feel larger, more luxurious, and more open. And while you don't have to choose the retractable option, I can't say enough about how much it adds to this car's luxury feel to be able to pull that glass back while you're driving just to get that open air. Adjustable heated front seats are also always included. One of my favorite features with this cabin is the center console. It's made of plastic, but despite that, it actually avoids feeling cheap because of its modern styling and the way that it opens. It really is a lot of fun to play with, and that, paired with the other accents around the car, like these aluminum trim pieces on the dash, go a lot further to make it feel like a luxury piece rather than just a rebadged Ford. Unfortunately, there is one thing we really do have to complain about in the cabin, and it's a standard feature. On every MKZ model, you're saddled with dealing with My Lincoln Touch. Now, that's the same thing as my Ford Touch. And while a touch screen might seem luxurious, and in a certain way it is, Anybody who's spent time with either of those systems knows that it tends to freeze, it can be very difficult to see in bright light, and if it does freeze up, you're going to find yourself poking at it a lot, it's distracting on the road, and it's just unbelievably frustrating. One of the most important things to note about the MKZ Hybrid is that it rides on the same platform and uses the same drivetrain as the Ford Fusion Hybrid. So you have to ask yourself, does this feel like a fancy Fusion or does it feel like a completely different product? And while it shares many of the same characteristics, there are some differences to note. Uh, continuously adjusting dampers do make it feel a little bit more luxurious. Uh, the suspension feels better when you're cornering. The car is supposed to get 45 miles per gallon on the EPA as an average between the city and the highway. You're never going to find that though. At least you're not likely to. Around the city, we're averaging 35 miles to the gallon. And after a day of stop and go driving recording this video, we're actually down to about 32. Part of that's because, like I said, we've been stopping and going, but at the same time, it's a little bit disappointing to realize that you're never actually going to manage that mileage. Now, there is one exception to that scenario, and that's if you're on the highway taking a long road trip. If you set the cruise control at a low speed, say 60 miles an hour, you'll actually beat the EPA estimates. Around town, the torque from the hybrid system will give you a lot of pull initially, and from a stoplight or a stop sign, it feels eager to go, but as soon as that tops out, you feel that the car doesn't really have very much pull, especially accelerating on the highway on an on-ramp. It feels like it's out of breath and it's just not very exciting to drive. It's also important to keep in mind that this car is priced like the entry-level MKZ, so you're not really missing out on much performance in that sense. You're also going to notice the sight lines of the car, and especially given how extreme the outside styling is, you might expect that it's difficult to see out. Looking forward, that really isn't the case put the sunroof down and it does block a lot of your rear vision. Now there's a reason why limo companies choose Lincolns to drive people to the airport. They're comfortable. And while this doesn't drive like an airport limousine, it certainly feels as comfortable as those seats are and that's definitely a good thing. 
Lincoln has made a smart move by pricing the MKZ Hybrid at the low end of its product range. By doing that, they'll be able to attract customers who are interested in saving money. But those same customers are going to be curious about one thing. Does the MKZ look and feel like a Ford that's been rebadged and redressed? The answer is no, for the most part it doesn't. It doesn't look like a Ford. It doesn't feel like a Ford when you're sitting inside. The only shared characteristic is in the drivetrain, and even that is generously masked by the different suspension. You're not going to get great acceleration out of it, but then again, you're saving fuel. And for that reason, this car escapes the stereotype to be a legitimate American luxury product.